what's up back here on the rc4 today and today we're going to talk about what i've learned in five years of riding so i've been riding roughly about five years i started back in june 2015 it doesn't even feel like five years ago and it has been quite the experience in a good way but today i just wanted to talk about what i've learned uh that some people have talked about some people haven't it's just like my take on what i've learned what i've experienced in the five years of my career i've owned numerous bikes i've only sold one and i've kept the rest <laughs> as y'all know if y'all been following me for a little bit currently i am on my 2015 aprilia rc4 and no, I didn't start on this. This isn't my starter bike. I started back in June 2015 on a 2015, ironic, uh, Yamaha R3. And to this day, I still have that bike. I still ride that. Not as much, but I still do ride it. I love taking turns on that bike. It's just amazing for that stuff. But I started on the R3, beginner bike, whatever you want to call it. And it's been a great bike moved to a supermoto as my second bike as a 2010 uh, Yamaha again WR250X but I'm too short so I sold that bike pretty fast sold that and then got a brand new 2015 I, I just like 2015s I guess uh, Yamaha Bolt and that one I customize and still have now and it's a cafe racer and it's such a fun cruiser bike got that then later down the road I just want to goof off kind of like I don't care if it falls drops whatever so I picked up a 2018 Honda changed it up a bit uh, Grom modded that out put some knobbies off-roaded it's a fun bike did that haven't rode that one too much and then recently this bike's almost two years old now I picked this up uh, 2018 and I love this bike. I waited a long time to upgrade to a super bike, if you call that. But yeah, people were shocked of how long, per se, it took me to upgrade to a 600 or a 1000 from my R3. It's like, yeah, the Bolt was a 950cc, but the V-Twin heavy bike, it, it's a different, different type of CC, if you want to call it like that. How it makes the power and all that. It's not like a 1000cc that's going to blow the blow your socks off per se but before I bought the Aprilia I made sure I was buying the bike that suited me and what I liked before I got this Aprilia I, I was pre hesitant getting a 600 a thousand because I really wanted to hone in on my skills and just make sure I'm comfortable enough to actually use the power of a 1000 or 600 for that matter I didn't want to get a bike that's way out of my comfort zone and ride it really slow, baby it, not really use it and grow into it. It's like, I could have done that and been fine, but me, I was having so much fun with the R3 just blasting it. I didn't really care about upgrading anytime soon. It took me four years before I upgraded to a faster bike than a 300 sport bike, if you want to call it a sport bike, but the R3 for that matter. I rode many other 600s, R6s, ZX6Rs. I rode BMW S1000, and then, uh, funny enough, uh, my buddy's Tuano V4, and that's what made me fall in love with the V4. Hearing it with the SC, huh? Yeah, I, I told myself that's the bike I want. That's the sound of a bike that I want. I had my eyes for the crossplane, the R1, for the longest time. The new redesign when it came out, it, it was very good looking. Like, I wanted that bike. That was my dream bike. I've heard the V4, like, I saw the Aprilia, the RZ4, and I just thought, like, that's a little unrealistic. Like, can I really attain that at my age? Like, I should own that bike. I'm not that old. And for those wondering, I am 23 right now, and I own a freaking RZ4. This is, it's stupid, but I love it. I, you gotta enjoy life sometimes. But this, that kind of brings me to my first point of today's video. And you do not have to start on a 600, 1000 to have fun. Don't rush into buying the biggest, baddest, fastest bike that you can get your hands on at that moment. Don't rush into it. That's why I learned. You can appreciate the power of a 600 or a 1000 
if you get a smaller CC bike. Now, I'm not saying get a Grom as your first bike. I do not recommend that. Whoever recommends a Grom as a first bike, it only really applies to people who are really commuting on slower streets like this, side streets, not long commutes, like maybe 15, 20 minutes max. That's really all I would recommend a Grom for if you're purely, purely getting one for commuting as a first bike. But that's what I'm saying, like for a first bike, when you're starting out, don't go crazy, don't be buying the newest R1M, all that stuff. That's just my opinion. Everyone has their different opinions of what to buy. You do you. Find what fits best for you. If you're a taller rider, then yeah, you might want to go like a 650 route for a first bike. But if you're all interested in me talking about first bikes, what I recommend and whatnot, leave a comment down and uh, I'll definitely make a video on that. Point number two then, when you're first getting into bikes, don't cheap out on gear. When I was first starting out, I thought Built from Cycle Gear was a decent brand. I was like, okay, if it's here, it's okay. This is me, that's a bump. Uh, not knowing too much about bikes and like the gear and all Alpine stars and all that. I'm like, oh, that's expensive. I don't need that until I'm a little bit more expensive. No, that is the wrong mentality as I realized. I mean, will Built get you through? Yes, but you're better off putting that money towards something better. Get like a mid-grade like Alpine Stars. I mean, heck, even Sadichi is better than Built. Uh, B-I-L-T, that, that's the name of the brand. But yeah, no, I recommend just starting out a little bit mid-grade. You don't have to spend the thousand plus on a new AGV Pista GP helmet. Just don't cheap out, just do your research. Find what fits you best, stay and easy. Alpine Stars always fit differently. Just depends on your body type. Number three, kind of tying in with this kind of intro I'm kind of like go like when I first started and whatnot but point number three I would say is practice 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 as they say practice makes perfect I mean there's no way to get like perfect but I'm saying you can get pretty darn good at it so I recommend just when you first get your bike get the hang of it go to an empty parking lot spend 15 minutes a day if you have a weekend spend as much as time as you can and just get good how the bike handles, know how it breaks, just get a good feel of how it handles. So whenever you have to slam on your brakes, come to a stop really fast because a stupid car came out in front of you, you know what your bike's gonna do to you. You're not gonna be shocked when, if you lock up your rear brakes, you know what to do when that happens and so on. You just gotta get a good feel for your bike. MSF course helps you with that. But when you're on your own bike, make sure you do the same thing. Just get used to the bike. And that goes for more safety. For point number four, um, just put it simple, cars are dumb. <laughs> I'll just say that right now. People who are driving cars, they don't see you. I mean, don't expect them to see you. Like this Mini right here. I'm gonna speed up in front of them. Because I don't wanna be in their blind spot. It's just these small things as you're a rider, you learn on, along the way. Know when you're in a blind spot, when you're in a good position to maneuver. Just expect the unexpected, as they say. Because car drivers, they will take you out. Uh, just, there's too many deaths involving, involving cars hitting motorcyclists because one, they didn't see you, you're going too fast for the conditions, and so on. So just be aware. That's what I've learned. I mean, I kind of figured that out while driving with a car. People. They don't drive that well. They're on their phones, etc. Just be careful. Just you get the sense of just be aware of your surroundings. And that brings me to point number five. Being on a motorcycle has helped me tremendously in all aspects of driving, motorcycles, alertness. Just you see more things. You're more alert. You're more aware of your surroundings. And that's not just on the bike. When you're in your car, truck, wherever you're driving, you notice people a lot more. And this brings me to, I forgot what number on. Six, five, something. It is don't ride outside your ability. Never ride 100% as they say. And what I mean by that is don't go too fast around a corner that you don't know. Let's just put it as that. That's a simple way of saying it. I learned this on the track. This is where I learned it, but I mean, it, it applies to street riding as well. If you're going too fast for the conditions, raining, weather, all that stuff, going around a turn, you're going like 120, 130 around a corner that you do not know what's around the other corner, if there's gravel or whatnot. Um, that's 
That's not smart. Is it fun? Yeah, I mean, we all take risks while we're on a bike. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I take risks all the time. I would call it a calculated risk, if you would. But you just gotta be smart of what you do. Never ride 100%. That's what they told me at track. Whenever you're riding 100%, like even 95, 100%, or even worse, over 100, you're just going crazy. Like you have no care. You just ha you're just having too much fun. That adrenaline's pumping. You're just going too fast for your own ability. Like you don't know how to corner perfectly yet. You don't. You're not skilled enough for this certain course. Take it at your own pace. Because if you're going too fast for the conditions, and then you're more likely to make a mistake. You're more likely to low side, go too fast, go off the edge, etc. Like that kind of things. Like that can happen when you're riding outside your ability. And I've seen that happen first thing on track riders and whatnot. Whenever I go to track, I notice this all the time. The biggest goal is to have fun and be safe. That's, you just gotta find the perfect balance between the two. But that kind of brings me to the next point. If you're in a group that there's a highly skilled rider, rider who's been riding for a while, they know what they're doing. Uh, it's really helpful to watch them, especially in turns, how they ride, etc. Uh, you learn a lot, especially if you don't know a road that well, choices and whatnot, and you're following a rider who's been on this road for so long, like they've done it so many times, um, that's how I learned some of these roads out here in Texas. Follow their lines. No, I'm not saying follow them going 100 miles per hour, but just try and keep up a little bit. Don't go too crazy, but just enough. Just push yourself a little bit, but not to the max. And that's how I learned uh, taking twisties a little bit faster. I ran with a lot more people that are a lot faster than me when I first started. And that's what helped me in the long run, is just learning that technique. And that goes back to my other points, just keep practicing. You're going to get better. Don't get discouraged by other riders just passing you like crazy. You're going to get there. Just stay focused, stay alert, and have fun with it. Bikes are really fun. never gets old I love this V4 if you're wondering this is a SC project CRT exhaust on this bike not a full system just a slip-on and it sounds amazing but I think that's pretty much it for this video that I can remember but if y'all have any like comments like for those who have been writing too of what you've learned as well leave them in the comments too share your experiences of what you learned too I love to hear it and if y'all have any ideas for any videos that you want to see in the future so I can make them, what not, what my thoughts are on a certain thing, etc. Leave it in a comment and I'll get to it as fast as I can. <laughs> well yeah, hopefully y'all enjoy this kind of what I've learned, my experiences, etc. It's been a fun five years and there's going to be plenty more to come. I've been very fortunate to experience these different types of bikes and still own them to this day. I have to say the Prelia RS4 is it's just something else. I've it's a bike that I've never really thought I would own, ride, all that stuff. It's been a great time with this bike. It, it's it's had its ups and downs with servicing and stuff, but that just comes with this type of bike. You just have to accept that. But when it runs, it runs amazing. It's been running a lot better now since I took it down to Austin to uh, AF1 and they did an amazing job with this bike. If you wanna know more about this bike, I've made quite a few videos um, of me riding it, etc. if you wanna hear more exhaust and whatnot. I think a video that I wanna do with this bike, um, let me know what y'all think about it too, is about, it's, it's almost been two years. I'll, I'll call it two years pretty much, but my two years of ownership with this bike, a year and a half-ish, give or take a few. But just like my thoughts on it, what I like, what I hate about it, would I do it again, would I change it, etc. I made a video of why I bought this over the R1 if y'all wanna check it out. That's pretty much it for today. So without further ado, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Later.